Yeah, so uh, it's a great question. We, uh, to, to your point, kind of always talk about the, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the awesome. It's kind of try how we try to talk to them when we get in there. Um, I, I would say certainly the good is exactly what you talked about, five takeaways, you know, and, and some of them coming up some really, you know, key points in time. Um, what that means to us, the 14-point swing, the seven that we didn't give up, and the seven we're hoping our offense is able to get. You know, are all are all huge parts of it. The bad, you know, we've got to be better on third down. We talked about that in here last week. Um, that continues to to be something that we've got to continue to improve upon and continue to work towards. Uh, the ugly, we've got to be better in the rushing game. Uh, give New Mexico State a lot of credit. Um, players, those running backs, played out of their mind. Um, played really, really well. We knew it was going to be uh, probably the most difficult rushing attack we had to face all year. And um, they certainly proved it. The coaching staff did a great job, um, giving them a lot of credit. The awesome part of it is, is obviously the win. You know, being able to find a way to do that. Um, and uh, New Mexico State's uh, got a good football team, and again, done a good job with their offense. Continuing to try to figure out ways to, to, to move the ball. And um, I thought they did a good job. I'm, I'm really excited about you know a couple of guys like Anthony Brackenridge at the end of the game is able to. I mean, it was unbelievable for us on special teams the other night. And then gets in late in the game, creates a big fumble for us that was huge. Um, Sebastian Benjamin, you know, um, has really kind of been dinged up for a while, comes back tough, gritty. Um, Dallas Walker, you know, was in on two takeaways, an interception, at, yes, interception to start of the game, you know. So, like anything, there's a lot of good and there's a lot of, and there's a lot of things you got to improve on. I'm still really proud of our guys. Um, just at their work ethic and their belief and trying to continue to find ways to, to win the game. So uh, all, all things that we need to continue to work on and continue to strive to get better at. Right, I want to ask you about Dallas. Um, obviously, kind of the defensive line, it's not always the most glamorous spot, but uh, gets his moment with the interception and, and the fumble recovery. Um, just compared to last year, how much has he contributed? Yeah, Dallas is uh, unbelievable. I mean, um, and you know, his story is an unbelievable story of, of uh, you know, a guy that, you know, you'd say is a local guy within an hour, hour, 10 minutes away, and, you know, goes to Texas A&M out of, out of high school and, and then comes home and is really out of football, you know, for, for six months um, out of school. And then is able to, to take a chance on us and we kind of take a chance on him, you know, and, um, and he's able to come in and provide us, you know, some real depth a year ago. And, uh, you know, we're at a point now where our defensive line, like you talk about, you know, a lot of times those aren't guys that um, they don't get all they don't get all the, the, the publicity and those type of things. But going into the game, you know, Jose Wheeler led us in tackles, you know, a guy that plays three technique and four eye. Um, you know, consistently Dallas is one of our top guys in production week in and week out. And uh, I, I really feel like our D line and the strength that they bring to us, um, you know, from a depth perspective and what we ask those guys to do, I mean, have been unbelievable all year. Uh, very, very, very proud of them. And, uh, and it's been evident uh, with the work that they've done. Coach Hall's done a great job with that group. And, um, and they're fun to be around. I mean, uh, Dallas is like one of the funniest guys. You'd be a super serious practice, and I can be mad and fussing and doing all those things, and then Dallas will just start yelling. I don't know what he's saying a lot of times, you know, but he's, he's a guy that really understands emotions, understands the room, understands his teammates and what they need. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a great example, too, of just – uh, and, and the interception is, is the best. When you watch Dallas, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly, you know, what his weight is at this point, but he plays and practices harder than probably any, any person I've ever seen at that size. And every day at practice, you know, we talk about D linemen and they're trying to get their hands up, bat the balls and things like that. And then they've got to turn and, you know, kind of our term is run out of the stack where they've got to go chase the ball being thrown down the field. Well, he does it every day. He does it every day, every play goes as hard as he can, and so he runs out the first play of the game. He runs out the stack like he's done 900 times at practice, and the ball gets tipped right to him. So you've got a 300-plus plus pounder now that's got an interception because he gives great effort, and the ball finds him. And um, I, I can't say enough of how proud I am of him as a person um, and, and what he's been able to overcome and then, and then obviously being in the situation where he is as productive of a player as we could ever ask for. Saturday felt like it was bad and ugly things were a bit more glaring than they have been for your defense all season. How do 
how do you sort of bounce back and get back to that level that you had before the game that you had in the last one game? Yeah, so, uh, you know, to your point, like I said, we, we've uh, – We've been playing at a pretty high standard, like we talked about, kind of post Bama, and um, and I think our guys, you know, have been on on pace to be as as probably as good as any WKU defense have been around here, and um, we're really really proud of that, and um, I'm very proud of our group. Um, you know, we just got to keep talking to them about the same things and what our standards are, and continuing to try to have good habits with the things that we're doing. Um, you know, we we've got to cut out a little bit of the sloppiness. You know. Um, there, there, there are some, you know, challenges in there that that aren't really excuses. They're things that I've got to get better at. I've got to do a good job, a better job of executing a game plan for them. I've got to do a better job of managing the game for them, um, and being able to help our guys get in the right calls in the right situations. Um, and there, there are some challenges. You know, I mean, we we played Sam Houston. I want to say October 16th. Well, that was two games ago. I mean, we it's been a, we haven't played very many football games. As crazy as that sounds, just from October 16th all the way to that period of time. Um, and so we've got to get some of the sloppiness out that comes with some of the volume of time that we've, we've had without some of those, um, without some of those games and um, can just continue to work to our standard. Uh, I've said it a lot, we've got great people in our room. Um, you know, for, for us to win a good football, against a good football team and a gritty football game the other night, you know, there was a lot of people that were disappointed in, in how we played. And I feel like, you know, uh, we always celebrate all wins and excited about being where we are, but we know we've got to improve. Along those lines, will it be, I don't know if easier is the right word, but a little more predictable going Saturday, Saturday, Saturday? Uh, uh, well, I think from a schedule standpoint, you know, we're all, we're all creatures of habit, and Coach Helton does a great job of uh, very much making this day like a Tuesday, this day like a Wednesday, this day like a Thursday, and I think that really – um, helps our players. Uh, I really do. But I know even walking in here with y'all, you know, and saying, well, what is, is today Friday or is today Monday? You know, I mean, yes, uh, you know, uh, Beth, I mean, she makes fun of me for all the things, right? But she uh, she makes fun of me all the time because it'll be, uh, uh, I guess it would have been like a Monday twice, and I would go, we, we, we take our family out to eat at El Maz on, on Thursday nights, like right after practice, and my kids, like, love that. Um, I know that probably sounds corny, but it's it's a Monday, and I'm like, baby, what are you, what are you doing? 6.15, why are we not why are we not at the restaurant yet? And she's like, well, baby, we do that on Thursdays. And in my mind, that was it. So. There, there are some things. So we are very much looking forward to kind of having being back on schedule and being back in a little bit normal routine. Uh, I think there's a lot of great things that come. Obviously, the exposure and what ESPN is able to do for our conference, you know, um, and and some of the adjustments that you got to be able to make. But uh, yes, we are looking forward to being back on a normal schedule. Well, I think like anything else, you know, um, I try to talk to them a lot just about controllables and uncontrollables and um, trying to kind of have a plan for everything um, while while still trying to kind of stay in your lane of what you do. And that's that's really the biggest challenge. I and mean, we've talked about those things with our staff, you know, this morning at length. Um, you know, I, I don't get to control who, who, who's injured and who's not. Um, I try to try to do a good job of being able to have a plan for different personnel groupings and and who can kind of be our best eleven to go out there. And you know, fortunately, we 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 are we've done a good job in recruiting our, our defensive assistants. And Travis Taylor, when he was our DPP, did a phenomenal job with this group of men being able to uh, bring us some depth. But we'll have to go out there and play with whoever we've got. Uh, we hope the good fortune of that is that we. We prepped them for that, and we practiced them and prepared them for that. Um, and uh, so I think as we get down into it, you know, we'd love to be able to have a lot of this, as many of those guys back as we can. Um, you know, again, I know I said it earlier, you know, uh, about Sebastian Benjamin. I mean, I just I can't tell you, uh, gritty, old school, tough. So proud of him uh, being able to go out there and play the way that he did, and the selflessness that he played with on Saturday. Um, you know, and, and hope, hopefully we'll be able to have some situations like that if we when we get back. But uh, we kind of anticipate getting a lot of guys back this week. But 
we're still going to have to have a plan for whoever's out there and whatever situation, whatever the moment. And hopefully, you know, our defensive philosophy and, and, and our systems kind of give us a chance to do that. One guy you did have. Another thing Coach Elton talked about with a lot of tech specifically is their quarterback play. Yeah. What are some things that that quarterback does well that you guys are going to make an emphasis in practice this week? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll get into the to La Tech. So, you know, really interesting. I think uh, I think Sonny does a great job with the offense. Obviously, you know, very much rooted into the to the air raid principles, um, and you know, very difficult to go against. Good play caller. Good systems. Obviously, and um, and obviously, you know, Coach Young, the offense coordinator, is kind of taking over post FIU. Um, and so I think they've done a, a really good job. And the quarterbacks, you know, they've, they've played three different guys this year. And, and obviously, you know, kind of started with one guy, but, but kind of went in tandem for about four weeks um, with two different quarterbacks. And, um, and both, played a lot of, both played a lot of games. And then they wind up getting to the end of the game. I want to say it was, uh, I want to say it was Tulsa. And they, they wind up throwing Bullock out there, and he does really, really well. And, and he's kind of had the stronghold since then. You know, he's a he's, he's really interesting guy to watch. Um, when you see, he's a, you can tell he's a savvy guy and, and, and a gritty guy. He's, it's like his third play he's in. And, and again, they're in a close game, uh, you know, with Tulsa. And I mean, he's like looking at the running back in the end zone view. You see him, he's telling the running back where he should go. You know, most, most guys that are. 18 years old don't walk into a huddle and do that. Um, so I, I think he does a lot of things well. I think the ability to run and throw, I think he sees the field pre-snap very, very well. Um, and, uh, and I think he, he manages his feet really well and is able to extend plays, keep his eyes down the field. So we're going to have to do a good job with some of our plasters. Um, you know, the running backs, they, they play five. Five different guys are in there different times. Um, you know, there and there's a lot of carryover with with the primary. You know, three guys that are in there, but they play a lot of running backs, um, and they're not very specialized with what they do. Um, you know, they've got two tight ends that play for them a lot, um, and and kind of split those reps. Both talented guys, both can line up like a four receiver set and catch the ball. Can both line up with their hand in the ground and play as a true tight end does. Um, and then they've got two offensive linemen that come in and play tight end as well. So you've got you've got some some compacting prob problems there. Uh, they'll play nine receivers, um, seven or eight, you know, guys at a time. Uh, you know, one of the most talented groups we've seen all year. Um, you know, slot, their slot receiver, True Edwards. I mean, I think he was targeted, you know, 14, 15, 16 times last week. Really, really good. Obviously. You know, we know Jimmy. Jimmy's doing really well and having good success there. But I mean, they've got—they've really—they've got six, seven wide receivers that are as good as anybody in our league um, that we'll play against. Uh, an O-line O-line group that's played a lot of football together. Really, kind of two straight years of, of being starters, and uh, and I think really play well. I think they're really kind of hitting their stride, and um, I think they're playing their best ball. I think they're playing as well as any anybody in our league right now. Are you just pouring salt in the wound from last year's game? Because you were, I didn't know if it was a question or a statement. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, I, you know, I hope so. Again, it's a, a huge challenge. La Tech, um, to, to your point a year ago, I mean, um, felt like we played well in the first half. And, um, you know, they did, they did a lot in the second half to come back. And, Make it a game. Anthony Johnson wound up coming in, and uh, Anthony had an interception to kind of close the game out. Thank goodness, and um, it was a big, big moment, big, big game for us. You know, on the road at that point in time, and um, you know they continue to. I mean, you when you look at, at the season that they're having again, just how many games are one-score games, uh, overtime games. You know, and um, you know for them, and, and again, I think that. I think that we will get their best. You know, um, again, I think they're, that Sonny does a great job with the offense. Quarterbacks play well, um, and they do a great job continuing to make adjustments in the game. Um, whatever your answer is, 
they, they come back with the compounding problem next. And, um, and so I, I think they do a really good job with that. I think they really do a good job in game with their quarterbacks um, and, and being able to run the ball. You know, they are, they are not an air raid team that doesn't want to run it, uh, especially, you know, with what you see as a little bit of a change with Coach Young, um, it, it sounds like kind of taking over the play calling you know, with the O-line and what he wants to do. I mean, they're, you know, very much gap scheme oriented that's formation based and motion based. I mean, he knows he knows what he's doing. He knows who he's trying to ID and who he's trying to target very specifically. So, you know, I think all those things, we, we, we can't have lulls. We've got to keep our standard, our standard in the, the third quarter and the fourth quarter and throughout the games um, to, to, to play like Coach talks about with the championship mentality. That's what we're hoping to do. How you know I'm. You know I'm just cutting up no, with you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How important is it to outperform this Law Tech defense and put your offense in the best position to score? I, it, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's us versus their defense. Um, it'd be hard for me to evaluate that because I haven't watched them, um, and I don't know who who they are, or what they do. I think at the end of the day, you know, uh, I feel very strongly that our job, and, and my job, is to be able to complement our offense. And, um, you know, from year to year and kind of game to game, that changes. Um, you know, we're, we're a lot different defensively this year than we were a year ago. And, um, you know, the, like we've talked about here a lot with the, the takeaways and those things were so important to us in years past because of how many, how many snaps we were playing and how many possessions we were having to play and how we were having to try to kind of change the game. And, um, you know, this year we haven't had to play that volume of snaps. And so it, it's, it's helped us, um, you know, overall. And so I think just, again, whatever, whatever the system is, whatever the, 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 the recipe in the soup is to win, that's really, that's really ultimately uh, the goal that I want. You know, we, we, there are certain statistics that we feel really strongly lead to winning. And, um, you know, there are some things sometimes that you have to give up to win. And sometimes there are things that are going to look uglier than they have to to win. Um, and it doesn't make something right or something wrong or somebody's opinion right or wrong. It just means ultimately as long as we win um, and we can learn from our mistakes, that's what, we're, that's what we're trying to do. It's a huge game. They're playing really well. Um, and they're playing really well on offense, and they, and they say really well on defense. So we just got to try to figure out between our three phases how to put it together one more time and just focus on, on them. You know, going into this game, or going into any game, you guys are game planning for the offense. Of course, the offense is game planning for you. But you feel like with how strong and productive you guys have been this year, that that balance has kind of shifted where they're, they're circling you guys a little bit more than you're looking at them? Uh, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I think um, I think ultimately, like with uh, I think ultimately, like with coaches, you know, what we what we try to which try to look at is you know who who's, who's the best players. You know, offensively, we're always trying to say who are the best players, and uh, I probably you know uh, speak too much in these terms, but I, I, you'll hear me talk about a guy, particularly at the skill position. He's a home run hitter, which basically means can he take it from anywhere on the field and score. Um, can he hit? Can he hit a triple? Can he hit a double? Or, is he a, or can he hit singles? You know, and um, I think you look at those things first, where their players are, and then what they're trying to do with them, and um, and then the schemes that are going to kind of complicate it. You know, um, uh, you know, like I said, they're they're a very different style than New Mexico State's offense, obviously, but both are really problematic from a scheme standpoint. And um, and we'll have to we'll have to be dialed in for those things. I think what what we've done a good job of is I think our players, you know, uh, have just done a great job of buying into what we feel like our answers are going to be to things and kind of knowing what the next phase is. I think our coaches, assistant coaches, have done a great job of being able to say, you know, we're going to do this. Their answer should be this. So we're preparing you for these things. This should be their counterattack. And um, and so I, I think that's you know, what, what they look at. But uh, kind of like I said earlier, we just we got to take points off. We just got to keep people from being able to get in the end zone. If we can do that, then and we can win. That's all I really care about. One of the guys you got back this week, Virgil Marshall. Yeah. Somebody that missed oh, yes. Is that a guy Such an awesome story. Yeah, in that situation, are you easing him back in, or is he ready to go full bore? How do you, how do you handle something like that when a guy 
guy hasn't even played all year? Yeah, um, good question. I don't know the answer. I think I think they're all kind of individual based, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, Virgil is one of my favorite people in the entire world, uh, um, you know, and, I, and Virgil and I are very close. Um, I don't. I don't want to necessarily speak to the exact conversation that I had with him, but I care a lot about Virgil, um, and uh, I'm really excited to see him back and doing well. And um, you know, it was it, it did my heart good, particularly with his TFL the other night. And um, you know, he he's worked hard to come back from his injury, and um, he's done a really good job of kind of working himself back into the things that we've asked him to do. And uh, man, it just does my heart so good to see him to see him back and to and to have him back around. You know, um, the the in injuries and, and opportunities are are challenging thing. You know, in, in any sport, but particularly with ours. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Thank you.